Let me continue with the schedule where I left off because time ran out last time. So let's look at uh, some of the basic examples of sentences with verbs. We had laudo filium meum, I praise my son. Video amica meam Julian, I see my friend Julie. Dico tibi, hodie me cum eris in paradiso. I say to you today you will be with me in paradise. And audio rem novam, I hear a new thing or I hear something new. Audio rem novam. And perhaps we might want to notice at this point that the order of words in a Latin sentence is very free compared to English. For example, audio rem novam could be, uh, we could uh, say this in any word order and it would always mean the same thing. I could see audio rem novam, audio novam rem, rem audio novam, literally thing I hear new, rem audio novam, rem novam audio, novam audio rem, novam rem audio. So any word order would, would convey the meaning without any alteration. And the reason for that is that the declension rem accusativus identifies the object of the action and the conjugation audio identifies the first person. So no matter how we reorder the sentence the meaning is never lost. Uh, let's take as an example a very basic statement such as Peter sees Paul. Peter and Paul in Latin would be Petrus et Paulus, nominativus Petrus, nominativus Paulus. And Peter sees Paul would be Petrus videt Paulum, subject Peter, Petrus, sees the object Paul, Paulum. If we invert the sentence and we say Paul sees Peter in English, then we change the meaning. Now the subject, Paul, sees the object, Peter. So Peter sees Paul is different from Paul sees Peter. But let's look at the Latin. Petrus videt Paulum. The subject in the nom nominative, nominative sees the object in the Accusative. Petrus videt Paulum. If I want to change the action, I don't need to invert the order. Instead, I change the declension case. Petrum videt Paulus. The object is in the accusativus, Petrum, and the subject is in the nominativus, Paulus. But the order of words doesn't matter. So, Paulum videt Petrus, Petrus videt Paulum, means the same thing. Peter sees Paul. Whereas, Petrum videt Paulus, or Paulus videt Petrum, means Paul sees Peter. So, we see that in Latin we have four possibilities for two possibilities in English, because in English we rely in the word order to identify the subject and the object, whereas in Latin we use the declension to accomplish the same thing, which gives us a great deal of freedom. In the Imitation of Christ of Thomas Kempis, there's a sentence that reads as follows. Stude ergo cortum ab amore visibilium abstrahere et ad invisibilia te transferre. 
Stude is the imperative of studere, which doesn't mean study. It, it sort of means study also, but it mainly means something like to apply oneself or to be eager or to be zealous to do something. So stude could be translated as apply yourself, your heart, to pull it away from the love of visible things and to uh, transfer yourself to things invisible. Stude ergo cor, heart. Cortum, your heart. Core is neutral. So stude ergo cortum, ab amore, from the love of visible things, visibilium, abstrahere, pull away, et ad invisibilia te transferre, ad invisibilia, to things invisible, transfer yourself. So be zealous to pull your heart away from the love of visible things and to transfer yourself to invisible things. Stude ergo cor tum ab from ab amore visibilium abstraere et ad to ad invisibilia te transferre. There is a similar sentence in one of the letters of Saint Jerome which states the following Carnis amorem amore spiritus superamus desiderium desiderio Carnis amorem is the love of the flesh amor Amoris, amori, amorem, amore is declined like pater, patris, patri, patrem, patre. So amorem, accusativus, the love, and caro carnis, carni, carnem, carne is the flesh. Carnis is the genitivus, so it means the possession. So of the love of the flesh, carnis amorem. And now, let's look at the word superamus, we overcome. Carnis amorem, superamus, and we overcome it with the instrumentality of love, amore ablativus, and now that expresses instrumentality, through the love of the Spirit. Spiritus genitivus means of the Spirit. So notice what it says, carnis amorem, amore spiritus superamus. We overcome the love of the flesh with the love of the Spirit. But you see how many auxiliary words I need to use in English in order to express what Latin expresses through the, through the application of, of uh, declensions and of conjugations. Superamus, we overcome. Carnis amorem, the love of the flesh. Amore spiritus, with the love of the Spirit. And then it says desiderium, desiderio, a desire with a desire. Desiderium, accusativus, desiderio, instrumentality in ablativus. So with the desire or with the instrumentality, with the help of a desire, we overcome another desi desire. So desiderium, desiderio, superamus. So again, the entire sentence is carnis amorem, amore spiritus superamus, desiderium, desiderio. So in this we see the freedom that we have in Latin to order, to, to express ourselves very freely and not be constrained to follow a certain order and not to be concerned with inserting 
little auxiliary words in order to identify the person or the action or who is the subject and who is the object. So this is the beauty of Latin, that it gives us the ability to speak, to express much with little. And this is why various prayers are very difficult and various texts, Latin statements, are very difficult to translate into English because you have to completely reorder them in order to make them understandable. And often you have to insert various uh, secondary uh, sentences in order to express what something that flows in Latin very smoothly and very naturally. So, uh, once again, let me repeat this sentence. Carnis amorem, amore spiritus superamus, desiderium desiderio. Once again, time has uh, tempus fugit, time goes by very fast, and uh, I was going to discuss uh, some other grammatical matters having to do with verbs, but it will have to be postponed to the following episode 50 minutes go by very fast uh, but let's consider something on the average uh, people watch television for hours every day and we spend our time in various activities much time in perhaps looking at the internet or this or that 15 minutes is not that much and really very much can be accomplished by paying a little attention, 15 minutes a day, to the study of Latin. And before you know it, time passes, and you begin to see and be familiar with this language, and perhaps slowly you will be encouraged to use it in your own reading, study, prayer, meditation, whatever is your preference. So until next time, Valete.